I've been to Bali five times in my life because I love it so much. And I recruited my Balinese friend Deepta to help show you the 10 coolest, most unusual things to do in Bali that most visitors don't even know exist. I bet when you think of Bali that you think of this. For good reason. Bali is a culture based on rice, and its steep hills make rice cultivation challenging, yet beautiful. So what's the best way to experience this? Well, most hotels around Abud offer rice field walks, so ask your hotel. And don't worry, we'll hit Abud hard in a few minutes. The most iconic and the most visited rice fields are around the village of Tagalalang, about 15 minutes from Abud. You can hike through these rice terraces and the well-marked trails make it a great way to see the beauty of this place. Yeah, it's pretty steep in some places, but at least it's free. If you want to learn about rice cultivation, you have the option of hiring a guide on the spot for 5 or 10 US dollars. Or you can just stop the car and go on your own. Bali is not exactly short of rice fields, and as a bonus, unlike the US, the Balinese don't have guns, so you probably won't get shot by the local farmer. I'm not really into jewelry, but I had to get something for my two daughters anyway, and this lady sure made it lots of fun. Bali's silver jewelry comes in all shapes and sizes. Intricate, traditional to modern, almost all handmade, and it's relatively cheap. The best place to shop for it is the village of Saluk, Bali's center for silver and goldsmiths, which is about 20 minutes outside of Abud. There are tons of shops. Wait, you designed it yourself? Wow. Our advice is to bargain a bit, and of course, our favorite is Bara Silver. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> If you're lucky enough to be in Bali during a traditional temple ceremony, you are in for a treat. It's a great opportunity to witness Balinese Hinduism in action. These ceremonies are common enough that if you're in Bali for one or two weeks, there's a good chance you can catch one. I'm super grateful to Deepta for taking me to his local temple in Abud for the full moon festival. So we are in uh, Puradesa, one of the main temples in the village. Regardless of what your religious views might be, the energy in this place was undeniable and felt so special. It was one of my favorite Bali experiences and something you should see if you want to experience how special this island is. To find a ceremony, ask your hotel or a local for recommendations. These ceremonies are an important part of Balinese culture, so it's important to show respect. Check out our Bali's Customs and Traditions video for info on how to be respectful when visiting a temple. If you're into the wet and wild, this might be the adventure for you. The most popular place for whitewater rafting is on the Ayung River, close to Abud. The cost is 30 to 50 USD per day for a half day, and 50 to 70 for a full day, assuming you're staying in or around Abud. In Bali, many things are still handmade by incredible craftspeople. Drive past any home, any temple, just about any place in Bali, and you'll see these incredible stone carvings made from local volcanic pumice. We are in Batu Bulan village, and this village is very famous for stone carving. If you want to bring some home, and by the way, they look fabulous in a garden, there's a massive range and it's not at all expensive. It'll probably cost you more to ship than the cost of the piece itself. Just watching these folks is really interesting and they won't mind if you have a look because they're really open and welcoming. Stone not your thing? All right, we are in Mas village and this village is very famous for the wood carving. Well, then the village of Mas is right next door to Batabulan and it's a hub of traditional wood carving where you'll find traditional pieces, and let's call these less traditional pieces, which should at least entertain you. There's a good chunk of stuff on the tacky side, but at least you can pick up a good conversation starter. There are also tons of really classy Balinese carvings to choose from, and you could spend the whole day ogling wonderful carvings. Just like stone, it's not very expensive, and don't forget to bargain a bit. You'd be doing yourself a disservice in Bali if you don't get a massage. Come on, you owe it to yourself. You can pay one to 200 USD for a fancy resort massage. That's what I did at Bali's Best Wellness Resort. 
But why not save a ton of money because you can get something almost as good on the beach or even on the side of the road. When we were in East Bali trying out the New York Times recommendations, that's next by the way, we tried this place and it was magical. And it only cost us 10 bucks per person for an hour long massage. Thumbs up or thumbs down? Thumbs up. My thumbs head up. is like 10 times lighter. Oh good. You know, the New York Times travel section is my go-to to get good advice on what to do when traveling to a new place. We tried almost everything on their list, and I have to say I was pretty disappointed. Most of the best stuff the Times recommended we've already covered, getting a massage, silver jewelry, and carvings. The Times also suggests a few other activities we tried, so here's our quick rundown. Brunch at Starfish Blue at the W in Seminyak. It is a total cruise ship vibe. I don't know what the Times was thinking. The Times suggests scuba diving or snorkeling on two shipwrecks in East Bali. I enjoyed snorkeling on this Japanese shipwreck. It's just a few meters off the beach, so super easy to access. I'll give that a 7. They also suggest diving off the USS Liberty, a sunken World War II cargo ship. You'll need real scuba equipment, which I didn't have. I did this 15 years ago with proper scuba equipment and I liked it. But there are so many better places in Indonesia for scuba holidays, so I'll give my combined experience here a 5. Between the two shipwrecks in East Bali is the Blue Star Hotel that the Times suggests as a place for lunch or as a place to stay. I'll give it a 4 as a place to eat and a 2 as a place to stay. I don't get this Times recommendation here at all. My Balinese friends agreed. And then the taste yeah. not authentic. Then there's the Klung Kung Water Palace. A good stop if you're headed to East Bali. I'll give that an 8. Check out our video about Balinese culture and architecture if you want to see how water shapes Balinese design. Okay, was that 36 seconds? One of my favorite Bali activities is also one of the cheapest. Taking a boat ride with a local fisherman, which can run you as little as 20 bucks. We caught our boat in the remote fishing slash diving town of Ahmed in East Bali. This is a great way to see the coast and just a really fun way to spend a few hours. Bring some drinks along and you've got yourself your own private sunset cruise for a fraction of what a tour operator would charge you. Yep, we are serious. Going to a funeral was our second favorite activity in Bali. But you need to know that funerals here are a celebration. You'll know when they're happening because outside most temples you'll see them building tall structures like this. But I'm just scratching the surface here. We go deep into Bali's ceremonies in our video about Bali customs and traditions. If you want to know where to stay on the island, we test drove a bunch of places to come up with the ultimate hotel guide. From ultra luxe to affordable hidden gems. Ah, Abud, the cultural heart of Bali. This little town in the hills of central Bali has been drawing travelers and artists for decades. It's why Bali became famous in the first place. To me, Abud is the place to go if you want to experience the real Bali. So here's a quick rundown on how to make the best of a few days in Abud. As a haven for artists, there are no shortages of art galleries here from upscale to street art and everything in between. Want to bring home a sculpture or fun wood carving? No problem, there are art galleries for that too. Abud's also a great place to shop for clothes, from women's fashion to men's designer batik shirts. There are tons of places to get a massage or have your nails done. There are restaurants and cafes galore. Balinese, Indo food, and Western too. There are tons of temples right in the city, and we love the Lotus Cafe that's inside the grounds of Abud's famous Saraswati Temple. There are lots of knickknacks or homewares to bring home, from a bunch of charming shops or from the souvenir market. There are small alleys to discover, often with something pretty surprising. I just stumbled into this museum down an alley that was the former home of a famous sculptor. Sure, a bud can be a bit scruffy in places, and there's definitely too many tourists, but be persistent and curious, and don't be shy about poking your head into places. The Balinese are so nice and laid back that 99% of the time, they won't even give you a second look. And with a bit of luck, you can discover magical things. Thanks for watching, and see us in the next video.